put on a killer show and it's great to see him. It's great to see the guy doing the songs I knew. I saw Paul McCartney and he did all the songs. I heard this Paul McCartney quote where he's they like, how do you play your music when you play it live? Do you like jam? Do you like take liberties? And he goes, no, I play it the way it was recorded because these people all heard it on the radio. They heard my songs on the radio and that's what they grew up listening to, that version of the song. And I'm going to give them the song, the version of the song they know. I'm not going to make it some fucking reggae version today, you know, or do a fucking 40 minute jam in the middle. I'm giving them the song they know. And guess what? Paul McCartney has a big enough catalog where he can give them all songs they know. And Tom Petty, man, I wanted to hear him play his songs, but he's gone now. And that wasn't even the worst death of the week. Not even close. And it wasn't those 59 people in Vegas. I joke about it. It was terrible, but, you know, I didn't know any of them. Sorry. It doesn't affect me when I don't know people. I don't even know they existed until you told me they died. I I don't know. It doesn't get me. It's like I've become desensitized to fucking mass shootings. But Ralphie May is a comedian who he, he had a heart attack, I guess. Cardiac arrest. I don't know what that means. He died. That's what it means. I was watching fucking updates. I was going to my, my brother-in-law's on Sukkis to his office to see updates of the Yankee game into a dark room so I could, uh, so the kids, the Orthodox Jewish kids wouldn't see me using electricity and I'll use electricity on, on the Sabbath. I'm telling you, this is not a, this is an actual, these are people amongst you. This is not an aboriginal tribe. You can't use electricity from Friday night sundown till Saturday sundown. God will be angry if you turn a light on. And computers count too. So I went in there and was checking baseball scores and I I don't know, I hit Twitter or something. And then fucking the news came, Ralphie died. He was great, man. He was great as a person. My first memory of him was like uh and I'm sure you'll probably hear a lot of this in podcasts this week. My first memory of him was was in the main room closed when the comedy store still had balls. And it was just comics hanging out in there. I remember one day fucking Ron Jeremy was there talking about how how I think that maybe to Stan Hope and Rogan. I think it was Stan Hope and maybe maybe Rogan, but I think to Stan Hope talking about how cock rings work. Fucking hanging out. It was just like a lounge. Now it's like an actual operating room all the time. There they just had it one night a week. And Black Knight was on Tuesdays, Fat Tuesday. And he was in there, and he was just, like, warm, Ralphie. He was just like, oh, what's your name, killer? And, uh, you know, Ari. He goes, how long have you been doing comedy? I think a year. I think it was a year, maybe two. And he was just, like, smiled. He's like, oh, that's when it's just still good. I didn't know he was only two years older than me. He was 45. But he was a headliner when I started. When I started at 25, that guy was already a headliner. And he gave me some, not even advice, he just said, like, I'm not going to do the impression for a while, but he was like, that's when comedy's still fun. He goes, a year in? He goes, that's, that's it's still just fun. And I didn't know what he meant because I knew I was starving to death. I knew I didn't have money to fucking eat. My parents paid my car insurance. And they paid my medical insurance. And that's because they knew I wouldn't pay for it. No, I was on their medical insurance for a couple of years. They paid my car insurance. No, excuse me, vice versa. Car insurance was covered. They paid my medical insurance. And then I got into a car accident and someone's like, well, he's in California and you're in Maryland? Then no, you can't be on his. And then that was it. End of the road for that. I had to pay my own car insurance. But I didn't know where I was going to eat. I didn't have enough money. I was earning, you know, six six fifty an hour at the comedy store, six twenty five an hour. Excuse me. Eventually got a raise to the door, which was twenty five bucks a shift, which is in the end three seventy five an hour, something like that. Jesus Christ, fucking illegal ass motherfuckers taking advantage of comics who want a fucking life. Because that's when it's just fun, and I get it now. I get it now. There's no business. There's no fucking network. Making you make a decision about what's best for your art form or fucking losing a show you built up. There's none of that shit. It's just fucking try to write a joke 
and make it fucking good. I saw him at the improv once. He showed me uh, outside the improv. He showed me this nug. This nug like I had never seen, but it was massive. He's like, Ari, come here, man. Look at this. He held up this nug. I mean, it was the size of... I'm trying to think how big it was. It was the size of like... A, like a computer charger. You know, the part that plugs into the wall. That that uh, that Mac computer chargers. You know, that squ- it was like that. I mean, literally, it was like that. And I, he put it in my hand. He's like, check this out. And I was like, God damn, Ralphie. That's fucking huge. It was huge. I've never seen a nug that big. I didn't even smoke that much then. A little bit. But I have money for weed. So it's like, I started smoking weed when I went with Rogan and Eddie Bravo to some guys. Atari's... uh Atari's weed shop and then they just gave they gave a gift bag to Rogan and Eddie and then the guy behind the counter was like what about this other guy and he was like uh yeah give him a gift bag too and then I had like five different grams six different grams separate different grams of weed and I was like I'm a smoker now now that I have it and I held this fucking nug that Ralphie showed me in his hand and it was like heavy and I was like damn I've never seen a nug that big man dense and fucking huge and I was like, cool, dude. That was fucking cool. And I gave it back. He was like, nah, kill it. That's for you. I was like, what? What do you mean? I mean, this had to be an eighth alone. Just this one nug. Probably more. Nah, killer. You go for that. And I was like, what? No way. I can't take that. He goes, yeah, it's for you. I was like, why? He goes, man, when I was broke, Joey Diaz used to give me weed. I'm passing that shit on. Can you imagine? I mean, that's 50 bucks. Easy. That's 50 bucks worth of weed. Giving it to some guy he didn't even know that well. He just knew of. Nah, I knew him a little better than that back then. I knew him a little better than that. But he was just nice, man. He was just a nice dude. He'd always be warm. He'd always fucking reassure you. Aw, oh, you're mad funny. You've been funny, man. When are these motherfuckers are gonna find out how funny you are? Ari, right, these motherfuckers come to their senses yet? They find out how funny you are? I mean, he'd, no one does that shit. And he did it to everybody. He did it to everybody. Took me on the road with him a couple times. Tempe, it opened for him. I got mad at him. I got mad at him. After the show, he was, uh, I was going back to the Super Bowl at Rena I I bought Snuggies for everybody. It was a big gift for them. We had the same Super Bowl party every year. Me, Kevin Christie, Rena John Reap, David Taylor. That was like the core group. And then we had other people. Sheezer came sometimes. We had lots of people that came. But we had a core group that was always there. Tracy. <sighs> Sam Tripoli. You know. And I bought Snuggies for everybody. It was going to be a fucking great gift. I found it on Amazon early on sale for like four, six bucks, eight bucks each. And I was like, hell yeah, I'm going nuts. I had commercial money or something. A little bit enough to spend then. And Ralphie took fucking two hours to come downstairs to fucking start the drive back. He wanted to drive back from Tempe instead of instead of uh, instead of flying. No, it wasn't Tempe. It was Phoenix Live. It was Stand Up Live, where I'm doing my my live podcast on on August, October twenty sixth. And he was like, "Sorry, man." And I was just sitting outside. I wasn't even sitting in my fucking room. I was outside waiting for him. Sorry, man. Or maybe I was smoking then. I could have smoked some cigarettes if I was. I don't remember. Ah, man, I had an attack. <sighs> I was so mad. By the time I got home, I was like, drive me straight to run his easies. Might have been at Reaps, actually. It was at Reaps that year. So like, drive me straight there. I fucking got there at halftime. No Snuggies. Eventually, I gave them to my, my basketball team, my intramural comedy, comedy league basketball team, Sean Kemp's kids. Can anybody help me with fucking setting up a comedian's basketball league in New York, please? Um, 
seriously, reach out to me and help me do it. I don't, I don't know who to do. I want to do it all comedians basketball league. So anyway, I got mad at him, but he, he taught me stuff. He taught you stuff. He really did. He didn't mind sharing his fucking knowledge. I was smoking in the green room when he walked in at Phoenix Live. I was, and they give you permission to do that? But that was just because he couldn't smoke then, actually, now that I think about it. You motherfucker, Ralphie. That was just because you couldn't smoke because you had that fucking attack in Tampa, and they said you couldn't smoke. So when you found me smoking, you were like, did they give you permission? You smoked everywhere, motherfucker. You goddamn liar. You smoked everywhere. Did they give you permission? You know they gave you permission. You are Ralphie May. If you wanted to smoke in there, they let you. So I was like, oh, no. And I went to the bathroom. That one he was fucking just being shitty on. But he'd give you advice like, here's the deal, man. I'm stuck. I'm not good at impressions. He's like, either you, they're going to hire you 1500 bucks, or they're going to hire someone else for 1500 bucks for the league minimum, 1500 bucks. Now, you're the guy who orders $175 worth of fucking food and drinks all week. That other guy got chicken wings once, and that's it. Now, who are they going to bring back next time? 1500 minus 175 or 1500 minus 1250 It's a good lesson. It was a good lesson. You know? I didn't know that it like actually came out of somebody's pocket. Man, he was nice. He was nice. He put on, two, he put on a two-plus hour show. Every single show that week in Phoenix. Every single show. I opened for him Brea, too. And he used to do this thing when he sold merch. When he goes, people always, oh, stop the fucking impression. People always ask me, why do you put on a two-hour show, Ralphie? And I said, here's why I put on a two-hour show. Because the average American makes, what do you say? Makes 14 bucks an hour. After taxes, that's $10. ticket to my show costs 20 bucks that means it takes you two hours to earn the money to come to my show and if it takes you two hours to make the money to come to my show i'm goddamn well gonna give you that two hours back and it never dragged it didn't drag he killed for those two hours but he was fat he was so fat and he had diabetes i'm sure right i mean i'm guessing at this point but he went up to 800 pounds some point then 400 And by the, I mean, last few years, I knew it. I knew what was going to happen to him. It wasn't even like I could have called it. I mean, like I did call it. Every time I saw Ralphie, when I said goodbye to him, I said goodbye to him. I had no expectation that I'd ever see him again. Every time. I got uh, Bonnaroo, I did my first year at Bonnaroo, which was three Bonnaroo's ago. Had a great time. Everybody did mushrooms. I gave some to Ralphie. Ralphie's like, give me one of those, motherfucker. (laughs) You're damn right I will. You're damn right I will, Ralphie. You got any for my boys? (laughs) Yeah, man, I got some for your friends too. I bought like two ounces of mushrooms and shit for every comedian in Bonnaroo. My friend hooked me up and bought them. Let's just fucking fly get in. Yeah, he had us in his tour bus, smoke pot and shit. And he fell asleep at fucking concerts, you guys. He was so fat. He was so fat. <sighs> I mean, you turn around, you're like, we're all fucking jamming in this fucking VIP area. Because he was headlining Bonnaroo. You know, the comedy tent. He was headlining, doing his own hour. We all did 10 minutes. He was doing his own hour. We had a 10-minute person show. He had a tour bus that he brought on. He did it right. He gave me the idea to do fucking RV the next year with Soder and Ren is Easy. That's where I'm going by this year. I'm doing Bonnaroo too in June. I'll get an RV. Maybe I'll go camping. Maybe I'll camp. Maybe I'll tent it. Tent or RV. I'll see who else is coming with me. And uh, 
I turned around. We're in this fucking side of the stage. I forget who's playing. Fuck, good band, you know? Jam it. And you turn around, and Ralphie's sitting down asleep. Literally asleep. <laughs> he was fucking passed out at a live music concert. What am I talking about? I fall asleep at UFCs. I literally fall asleep at UFCs. What am I talking about? Sorry, Ralphie. I'll take that one back. I fall asleep at UFCs. People are punching each other to death in the face, and I'm up. <coughs> Anyway, we're all going home. Big J gets on an early flight. He flies out at 6 a.m. I don't know why. I'm taking the fucking 1 p.m. flight. And he goes, Ari, you might be fucked. They're canceling flights. I was like, what? I think my flight went through Atlanta or something. I didn't get a direct maybe. Anyway, so I'm there. Big J got, or maybe Big J went and got on one to Atlanta. Because he, that's what, he had been there for like three hours at the airport. Then he finally got on one. To me, they're like, nah. And I'm like, well, when do I fly? They're like, later today? And they're like, nah. I'm like, when? They're like, we don't know yet. I don't know what it was. Thunderstorm somewhere. I mean, it was June, so it wasn't snow. <coughs> and they're like, we don't know when we can fly out. And I was like, fuck. I'm like, do you mean not today? And they're like, yeah, we don't know. And I'm like, fuck, well. And I was real, at that time, real zen about a lot of shit. And Jay's like, what are you going to do? And I knew. I knew what I was going to do. There was no question in my mind. And I told Jay right then. You can ask him. I'm not lying. I go, I'm going to call Ralphie. I'm going to let him know I got, I got, my flight got canceled. He's going to have me over. He's going to barbecue for me. And that's exactly what he did, man. Fucking Ralphie May. I, there was no question he was going to invite me over for barbecue. The only question was... No, the only question is what we were eating. He might have taken me out for food. And he took me out for food all the time at Katana. I mean, all the time. And he would eat so much. I mean, he'd get one of everything. And you're like, wow, what a feast for us. For you? <laughs> oh, man, that's for me. You get your own food. <laughs> and then we'd finish all he could. And they're like, nah, you can pick out some of this. <laughs> <laughs> like he wasn't intending to eat it the whole time. He ran out of room fucking seven portions in. He ate six and a half. <sighs> you motherfucker, why'd you die? <sighs> anyway, he I mean, he cooked barbecue like nobody. I went to one of those barbecues when we lived on Gardner. When him and Lana lived on Gardner, he didn't have any money. He invited me over, and he would. He made this fucking marinade for chicken. His chicken was so good. I can't even begin to describe it. I can't even begin to describe it. It was just. Well, look at me trying to begin to describe it. It, there, it was like not. I mean, he cooked. He like let it sit in that thing for twenty four hours. He made his own sauce. It wasn't like he got some sauce and put it on good sauce. I mean, he made his own sauce. He took that shit seriously. Was it on the roof? That's an old memory. This is 16, 17 years ago. I mean, I was just happy to eat free food. That's how long ago it was. I was just happy to eat free food. And it wasn't just free food. It was Ralphie May barbecue. It was the best, man. He was so fucking good at cooking. And I'm like, what are you going to do? Um, I'm like, I'm going to call Ralphie in Nashville. That's where he moved to. And I'm like, he's going to have me over barbecue. And he goes, yeah, man. I call him. He's like, hey, what's what's up, killer? <laughs> what's up, killer? And I'm like, hey, man, I'm here. I got snow. I got rained out. My flight got canceled. Ah, oh, fuck. I'll send somebody to pick you up right now. You're coming over. I didn't even have to ask him. There was no question. I'm sleeping there tonight. There was no question. And when I got there, he goes, you're lucky, man. I I got I already got the egg going. Got that, that, that green egg barbecue thing, that your own pit, you know. He made ribs. He made steaks on there. And he made chicken. And we watched the Hall of Fame induction ceremony. I think Green Day got in that day. And it was great. He was sad. He was sad because his family was getting taken away from him. 
He was sad about it. He was real. Ter- he was real torn up. He loved his family. He wanted to keep going. But it was nice to see him. And that was the first time I said goodbye to him. When it was like, in my mind, this is the last time I'm ever going to see you. You can't get through to some people if you're too smart. And comedians are smart. We know how to spin stuff. When Brody Stevens was going through his like mania, he, he'd be like, Ari, come on. You know I'm joking. I make jokes. And you're like, part of you is like, yeah, you do make jokes. And some of the stuff he was doing was funny when he was going through his like crazy phase. He was, he was making it funny, but he was actually going through a manic episode. Multiple ones. But while he was doing that, he was also drawing humor out of it. So they're like, yeah, you are making it. So it's hard to tell. And when someone's that fucking fat and they're going to die and they, the doctors tell you you can't smoke pot anymore. And then it's like, all right, I guess I can't smoke pot anymore. And I don't even know. He was such a good liar too. He was such a good liar. You couldn't, you couldn't see past it. You could not argue him. I mean, I know some people that are going to die. He was one of them. There's nothing you can do if they're smart. I get scared for certain people. You know? I get scared for Metzger about drugs, but like, he says he's smart about it. He goes, you don't mix. That's the way people die is when you mix. I don't know. He's too smart for me. You can't have it. You can't have intervention with someone who's smarter than you. <sighs> Bert's getting in shape. I mean, that's good. Not obese anymore. That's great. Um. By the way, Bert doesn't have a drinking problem. He's just got to fucking slow down. But it's not getting in the way of his life. You leave him the fuck alone. Doesn't have a fucking problem. He's got a life, wife and kids making more money than ever. He's doing comedy. He's getting ready for a new special. Fucking relax. He's getting shit done. Com- st- alcohol's not getting in the way of that. He could slow down, but it's, nobody's saving his life. Relax. So he had me over and it was a great time. And when I said goodbye, I gave him a big hug. And that was going to be it. That that was going to be it for sure. And then... um. I got back from Southeast Asia. I recorded a uh, a This Is Not Happening show at uh, Third Man Records. That's what I came back for. Um, And I was hoping Ralphie would do a barbecue. Me and Nate could go over there. And and who else was in town? I forget who else was in town. Sean Patton. But he was, uh, you know, he was like, oh, man, I got tired. I fell asleep. Couldn't do it. And I was like, well, that's it. Never going to see him again. But I did. By the way, that, that Third Man record, when it comes out, I don't think it's come out yet, but that'll be the last official This Is Not Happening recording with me as a host. It'll go on, I guess, without me in some bastardized version with the name only, but... That'll be the last real version. Uh, when we do this, not happening. I mean, uh, rename storytelling show. It'll keep going. The same. It'll be the same fucking show. But with that name, that Third Man Records album will be the last one. Me, Ali Sadiq, Sean Patton, Lisa Traeger. One more that I'm not remembering. What a good lineup already. Who's the one I'm not remembering? Oh, oh, oh! How could I forget? Burt Kreischer. What a fucking killer show that was at Third Man. What a fucking killer show. God damn. If that's the last this is not happening thing, legit this is not happening thing, we did it right. Get your copy of that shit. I don't know how to find it. I don't know. Write Third Man Records. I don't think it's out yet. But get your copy of that. What a killer fucking show. I'm fresh back from Asia doing a story for the fucking first time ever. And it came out fucking fire. Anyway, speaking of that, the last time I saw him, I was in L.A. in June, so I could, I I guess, continue, you know, 
working with comics to try to get them ready for this not happening while they're waiting for them to come to their senses, waiting for the network to come to their senses and to fucking calm down about being butt hurt. And um, one of my responsibilities was trying to convince some of these comics to, to do the show, even though I wasn't going to be the host anymore. And I couldn't convince some people, Segura and Kreischer. They were like, no, I'm only doing because you're hosting, Ari. I mean, you're asking Tom Segura to give up fucking 12 minutes worth of material towards a special. He gets paid a lot of money for a special, and it takes him a long time to do it. For him to do this and not have, for him to do a story for me, he's taking out 12 minutes, which is if he does one in a year and a half, you're talking about two months worth of work, two months worth of fucking comedy development. And he was going to do that for me. But when I wasn't there, he's like, there's no way, Ari. And I, w- I couldn't blame him. So I was like, yeah, yeah, sh- for sure. You're right. Some guys continue to do the show. I didn't blame them. I get it. You work hard on a story. You want to fucking put it out. Totally cool. And some guys I was like, like, what would you do? I'm like, you know, if I were you, I would do it. Or if I were you, I wouldn't do it. One of the guys I thought should do it, even though I wasn't the host, was Ralphie May. And I was like, Ralphie. He goes, I'm not doing this show. I'm like, Ralphie, I think you should. You haven't been on TV in a while. Listen, I get that you're loyal, and I appreciate that. Ralphie did that show, one of the earliest shows we ever did. He did a a story about sports. He said it was one of the first times he was nervous in maybe a decade on stage. Tell him a great story. You know what? Is it possible we have that somewhere on, like, tape tape? If I have that, I'm going to upload it. Wait, I must have thrown it out. There's no way I moved with that One, two, three times. Mm, it'd be too bad if I don't think I have it. If I have it, I'll upload it. What are you going to do, Ralphie? Fucking sue me? I'm putting it up. Fucking, what the fuck is wrong with you? I mean, I guess he didn't do anything wrong. It was a lifestyle thing. Anyway, so I was like, Ralphie, you should do it. You haven't been on TV in a while, and this will do you good. This will get your career, not back, but like it will make you relevant again to be in these people's eye. Uh, Ari, I've done 19 specials, man. I don't need to do that. Fuck those motherfuckers. They take away that show from you? Fuck them. I ain't ever doing it. I was like, no, man, I'll be good for it. Shut the fuck up. I ain't doing that shit. They treat you like that? Fuck them. He had my back, man. That dude had your back. He had your back. You can't say that for everybody. You know goddamn well you can't say that for everybody. But that guy had your fucking back. He was always giving support to young comics. Always. The stories that came out from him after he died on Twitter and Instagram... You know, I can't be I can't be earnest on Twitter. I can't do it. That's not what it's the Twitter's for. Twitter's for jokes and information. When the revolution starts before they shut down the internet, Twitter will be used for in, in, for information. But it's not for saying like sad things, not for me anyway, maybe for other people. I can do it here because the podcast, I get earnest sometimes in the podcast. For sure, you've seen this. You've heard this podcast before. You know I get serious once in a while in here. This is the right spot for it. Not on Twitter. So, of course, you know, I make jokes about it. And Tom Petty. Tom Petty made me sad. Ralphie May. I mean, that one hurt. That one stung me. Didn't sink in for a while, too. So I talked to Joey Diaz. Was it that night? I called him. He was on West Coast time. He just picked up. How you doing, cocksucker? Like, I know what he meant. Not how you doing, but like, how are you doing with all this? And I was like, yeah, it's just tough to believe. But, you know, of course I knew it. Like, when did you see him last? He's just talked to him. I thought of calling him. I was thinking, like, I got to call Ralphie May. I was thinking that. I was thinking it. He wouldn't have done anything, but I would have talked to him one last time. I mean, I guess I saw him in June. I should feel lucky for that. 
He just smiled. His smile was as big as his fucking belly. And his belly was big. Fuck them. That's what he said. Fuck them. They ain't gonna do you like that. I don't need to be on TV again, man. Fuck that shit. And he wanted to do it, too. But the stories that came out about him were so fucking... Everybody had a Ralphie story about him helping them. About him being nice to them. And they hung up with Diaz. Driving, you know... Away from my sister's house to my to my empty parents' house. They were all staying at my sister's house. You can't drive on the Sabbath also. Like we're fucking Amish suddenly. Fucking Jews. And then uh, I just started crying. It hit me then. That I'm never going to see that guy again. I mean... I mean, I didn't see him that much, so it's hard to think about, you know? If you see somebody every day, then it's like you miss them the next day when you don't see them. I didn't see Ralphie that much. He was only in L.A. sometimes, and I wasn't in Nashville very much. I saw him in June. I missed having that barbecue in Nashville. Have that chicken one more time would have been great. Man, when you think, I know I'm getting older, I guess, and I'll I'll have more and more people die in my life. So it does get easier. But like, there's there's this thing, this finality of death, where it's like, it, it's never gonna change. You can't talk it different. You can't bargain it different. It's just the way it's going to be forever now. Ralphie Mays, Ralphie Mays, Ralphie Mays gone, man, he's gone. Nobody's ever going to see Ralphie May again. He was such a good dude, man. So, um, come on, get it together. So, uh, that's it. That's it for Ralphie. Fuck. It's like, how do you change that shit? You can't change it. All I do is when somebody dies, I try not to think about it. I try not to think about it. And then it comes up. You do think about it. And then it comes out, you know. You just gotta like not think about it. Look at me. I'll look at a picture of Christina. <sighs> so, anyway, buddy. I could. I guarantee you he's up there in heaven grilling. If there's a heaven, and I mean, I know there's not, obviously, but I guarantee you if there is, God's like, fucking hell, man. This is a good fucking chicken, Ralphie. How'd I let you wait 45 years? 
You fucking 800 pounds? What? You should have died 10 years ago, motherfucker. You should have been having this chicken for the last 10 years. You've been cheating me, Ralphie. God's going to make a fucking chicken plague so all those chickens go up there so Ralphie can cook them. All right, buddy.